Captain? Um, thank you. Um, you know, I, I just wanted to start off by thanking the people who consider themselves part of uh, the Charlotte community. Uh, two weeks ago, I asked for a community discussion surrounding the potential of us hosting uh, this event, uh, the Republican National Convention in the year 2020, and I wasn't disappointed. Uh, the community definitely answered the call. I've been contacted from people all across the spectrum uh, uh, of Charlotte, uh, from U.S. senators uh, to school children, people all across the political spectrum. Um, your dialogue has pushed me and my colleagues to act as a government that is more interconnected uh, to the voices of our constituents. Uh, you hired us the 12 voices that guide the business of Charlotte, and I take that responsibility quite seriously. The voice of the people should be considered in every decision that I make. Uh, second, I, I would like to clarify the difference between submitting a bid as opposed to putting forward an invitation. Mm -hmm. These are two very different things. Bidding is a process that allows two parties to explore the merits and possibilities of entering into some type of relationship. Each side gets to consider the merits of a bid and make a choice of whether or not to enter into said relationship. Through the process, each party can choose to continue or move forward, to continue to move forward or exit at will. In our city government, there are contracts that may be produced out of certain bids whose final approval is determined by our elected city council, the voice of the people. Anyone who thinks the role of council should be pre predetermined or is simply a rubber stamp for the desires of something other than the prerogative of our full, of our full council is, fool, is foolhardily mistaken. Well, on the other hand, some may is, ask why submit a bid in the first place. No one else did. Well, the truth is several other cities did submit bids, but quickly decided not to go forth. I am an advocate for, for putting yourself at the table. If you don't like what's on the menu, then you choose to get up and leave. But if you don't take your seat at the table, you, ha you have no say at all. And I don't think that's an effective way to lead. Uh, still, many will ask, why wait so long to raise questions? I think that's a fair question as well. I believe we as your elected officials did a poor job of going through this in an informative, open, and transparent fashion. Was it because the few of us that knew how the, pro the, the process works or uh, were informed about the minutia of the day-to-day of -day particulars of, of this bid kept that process insulated? Was it the inexperience of a new council who is not savvy enough to request the questions of economic impact, public safety, or planning and logistics get sent to their proper committees to get questions answered and involved in public comment. Questions like economic impact. I, I hear a lot of, a lot of comments about, um, um, uh, a lot of speakers uh, speak on the economic impact, but I still have questions about that. We hear a lot of people that represent business owners, but very few people that represent workers. I was a worker. It might be because the meeting was at 2 o'clock and a lot of those folks at work. I don't know. Could be that there was a well-organized effort on that behalf, which I applaud. But I can tell you I was a worker on the Democratic National Con uh, uh, Convention in 2012. And if it were not for me working three different jobs, I would have lost out as a worker. We were forced to take wages that were below the standard rates. We didn't get the overtime because workers were bought in from out of state. So those employers did not have to pay that overtime. You couldn't, had no choice in taking other gigs because that was the only gig in town. And workers continued to lose because of the precedent that was set after. So, I wish we could have done, had, had done a better job at answering some of these questions um, beforehand, uh, but we didn't. But also it could have just been that the bandwidth of your city council was completely used up I, uh, between our current work structure and the strong work that we have done up to this term. I believe it was a combination of all three of those things. Bipartisanship. 
the theory of bipartisanship has come up quite often in this debate. I truly believe there are many in our community, and I count myself as one of them, that truly believe in the principle of bipartisanship and exhibit it every day. Our mayor exhibited this concept in earnest when she proposed this bid shortly after we all took the oath of office. While many will question the effectiveness of her methods in today's political climate, I believe she was operating in the good faith of what a collaborative approach to leadership can bring. But I also believe that this idea of bipartisanship has been used as a dog whistle. As a council member, I am supposed to make the best decision for my city, not, uh, not simply, I'm supposed to make the best decision for my city and, and not make a vote out of prid, uh, a quid pro quo because another event happened in the past. I spoke to a Democratic mayor of a city that has recently hosts the RNC, and he had nothing but high praise for the partnership that the city had uh, with the Republican National Committee. And, was, and, and they were able to do something that did wonders for that city. But he also said that if he doesn't, he doesn't think that he would consider bringing that convention into his city today. Not necessarily because of the, 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 the uh, decisions, uh, uh, the, the president that we have or, or the political climate, um, but because of the priorities of his city have changed. Dedicating his city's resources to hosting this convention at this time would not be in the best interest of his city. Now, this is the nature in which I frame my decision. What is best for this city? On to tomorrow morning, we will wake up to a different reality in our Queen City. I think uh, that is when we will really get to exhibit the true nature of what bipartisanship means. If there is a majority of no's, many of my colleagues and business leaders in our community are fearful because they think we'll find ourselves in a, a, a more toxic political climate than the HB2 debacle, which we are still recovering from. There is a fear that the Republican Party in Raleigh and Washington, D.C. will be vindictive upon this city and our interests for a long time to come. It is not surprising that Raleigh wants us to vote under duress to further their interests. That is not bipartisanship. That is being held hostage. If there is a majority of yeses, and we will be given the task of hosting a sacred event, a nominating convention under the most contentious and divided political environments that my generation has ever seen. We must remember that this council was elected and has forced a citywide consensus of where our priorities lie. We must disrupt the systemic inequities that have perpetuated the economic disparities of our segregated city. We should not let this vote change our focus regardless of where it lands. It is said that elections have consequences. The consequences of our last presidential election gave Donald Trump an electoral college victory. We are reminded often that millions of people near and far <coughs> voted for him. And I have said many times over these past weeks that the crux of this decision rests on the effect of one man, Donald Trump. You see, I don't really see him as a Republican. I see him as a human avatar of white supremacy. He has hijacked the democratic process by taking advantage of the gray areas in our experiment in self-governance to create the chaos and do real harm to those that are most vulnerable in our communities. You see, for that, he could be a Democrat. He could be part of any institution that has ever been created in America, which we have decided in this community to disrupt. I believe our POTUS uh, represents the worst truths of who we are as Americans. Fearful of the other and a stoic defender of the supremacy of the white male patriarchy, which is at the heart of the original sins of this nation. We have seen what men like him can do here and around the world when those who can intervene don't. 
Our city council has a chance to intervene by joining literally every other city in the country by saying we will not allow our city to be the beautiful backdrop, backdrop to Donald Trump's diabolical leadership. What I, uh, what I most love about municipal government is that most of the work that we do falls outside of the national dialogue of politics. Unfortunately, when we decided to put in a bid for the RNC, we have to consider the condition of America's political climate and the effect that, that it has on our democratic republic. I do want Charlotte to host a Republican National Convention someday. I do not want that day to be in the summer of 2020. Thank you. Councilmember Driggs.